Greg, straight off the bat, happy new year. Happy 2022. How are you doing? How's the family doing, my friend? Uh, happy new year, Rudy. Uh, family's doing great. Yeah. Happy 2022. Man, that's, uh, that's crazy to say, eh? Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Uh, and, uh, and again, and good riddance to 2021, you know, it, it was a little better than 2020, but, um, you know, still not good enough. So we're, uh, very excited about what's going to, what's 2022 is going to bring for everybody. Hope you're doing well. How's you, how are you and your family? Family is doing great. And I got to tell you something, a big thank you to you for being an inspiration from our last interview talking about fitness, because, uh, I, you can just sort of see this guy here who you was bet. been in the gym, from the last time you and I spoke, which would been about five or six months ago, he's getting himself in shape, man. He lost six, no, oh, sorry, 20 pounds. Good for from him. From the time that we spoke. That's awesome. Good for you. That's, uh, that's fantastic. You've always been, uh, you've always been a bit of a gym rat. So, uh, yeah. I knew you'd find your way back. So, uh, good for you. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you, my friend. And like I said, it has a lot. Rudy, how Let's... do you feel? How do you feel? I sleep better. I eat better, uh, food to actually taste better, if that makes any sense. And I don't smoke yeah. or anything like that. Um, I'm thinking better. My mind is clearer. Uh, there's just so many other benefits. But the biggest thing is my confidence has grown so much because I really get a kick out of putting stuff on that I couldn't put on before because, you know, maybe the stomach or, you know, it just didn't fit right or it didn't get around the chest. But jackets I haven't been able to wear I'm going, wow, this is baggy. I'm going to have to take this in to the cleaners or something to, or tell her to get it, uh, you know, put in or whatever. But uh, yeah, the confidence has really grown because of that. So I thank you for that, my friend. Oh, good for you. Thank you for saying that. And uh, I'm proud of you. Good for you, man. It's uh, you, and you see, you just, you just need a little bit of progress. And then as soon as you see, feel the change, I mean, we're really big on uh, how you feel as opposed to how you look, the look, is awesome and it's sort of a side product of of working out and getting healthy but um you know you hit on all the parts of, of what a healthy body does right a healthy body means a healthy mind and then that trans transforms into you know feeling confident about uh, yourself and and how you carry yourself and it just it really changes everything so uh, good for you i'm proud of you and uh, keep up the good work and uh, keep looking fantastic I will, my friend. Look, for folks who may not have had a chance to see our last video, there is a reason why you and I talk. It's not just because we're family, but uh, you work at a facility that um, really is an expert when it comes to fitness. Yeah. Prototype sports performance is uh, is where I work. It's um, So we have, there's two facets to it. We, um, uh, we do uh, elite athlete training. That's the sports performance part. And then we do personal training. For uh, everyone else who's not an elite athlete, which, you know, is 99.9% .9 of the population, right? So, uh, so yeah, no, that's who we cater to or, or anyone who's looking to just take that next step and, and, and start uh, taking control of their body and movement and feeling healthy and feeling good and, uh, and taking care of themselves. We're there for those people and, uh, and it's, that's what we do and that's what we do best absolutely now one of the biggest reasons why i wanted to talk to you is because we are in the new year and like i said you and i have been working out for a long time i can say yeah, decades yep. and not a lie when i say that and the thing that i always have known whenever i'm at a gym when that new year rolls around suddenly when i'm used to seeing a certain amount of people it's packed and it's because a lot of people have those New Year's resolutions and saying, and one of them is, I'm going back to the gym and I'm going to get healthy. Because of the pandemic, a lot of times people could not do this. But because things are open up now, a lot of people are returning. A, I kind of do enjoy seeing people coming in, but at the same time, that means I got to wait longer for a machine or whatever. Exactly. What advice can we, let's, let's talk about this whole thing about, jumping in back into a gym or going to a train or any of these things um the difficulties because if you know i would say right off the top if you haven't been working out in a long time or even working out at home maybe it is different to going into a gym absolutely uh and getting into a gym and and so the the biggest problem the biggest challenge uh for people when they get back into it is either they get told by someone or they have this sense uh, themselves that 
you know, I've got to go from doing nothing to going to the gym four days a week and getting up at 5 a.m. and going for a run or and completely turning their lives upside down because they think that's what exercise and fitness is. And the challenge is when you turn yourself upside down on uh, like really quickly. So it's like I go from doing nothing to now I'm going to I'm committed. I'm going to go to the gym four days a week for the next six weeks. You know, you're setting yourself up for failure right? You just, that's too much at once. And it's really hard to maintain that. I mean, to go from doing nothing to I'm hitting it every single day, uh, you're going to feel good. You Well, you're going to feel like crap for the first week because you're going to be sore all over, right? I mean, so that's the other challenge. I mean, that, and, and I'll touch on that in a second, but, but asking yourself to take on too much at once, because we all have this idea of what fitness is supposed to be. And it's, and it's, and it can be overwhelming to a lot of people. And really, honestly, if you want to make changes in the new year, you just got to start small and slow. You got to change your habits. It's not necessarily about the workout that you're doing. It's at what habits are you in that were preventing you from going to work out before let's change those habits. So now you're more committed to actually doing the workout as opposed to forcing yourself and trying to find the time let's change some habits in your lifestyle and let's start slow don't hit the gym four times a week let's make a commitment of i'm going to go to the gym twice a week for the next four weeks that's your goal right and then at the end of that four weeks that's awesome i feel so good that i've achieved that goal i've gone and now i find you know what i can squeeze another day in. So now i'm going three days a week let's go three days a week for the next four weeks. That's our goal. Instead of my goal is I'm going to go to the gym five or six days a week, and I'm going to lose 75 pounds by June, right? It's like, ah, oh, that's just, you're setting yourself. And then you take that one day off. And then that one day leads to another day. And now you start feeling bad about yourself. Now it's like, oh, well, now I'm starting to lose again. Oh, I'll never get it back. And you missed a week here and you missed a week there. And now you feel like crap. It's like, all right, I'm just, you know what? And I'm, you, then you just give up right? You got to set yourself up for small little goals that are achievable. You mark, you hit those goals and then you set yourself another one. And so like, let's go one day a week. Let's go two days a week. Let's go three days a week and build that up gradually. Start off with small workouts. Let's just get through one 30 minute workout today. Next week, we'll bump it up to 40 minutes. We'll do an extra set here. We'll do an extra set there and just gradually build it because it's not a short-term solution. This should be what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And that's why I was talking about changing habits. If you change your habits and you make fitness a commitment for the rest of your life, as opposed to a six week goal to lose 20 pounds, then you don't have to worry about anything else. And if you do take a week off, or if you do have a couple of beer on a Friday night, it doesn't matter. You're going to go to the gym. We talk about gym credits, right? I mean, you built up the gym credits. Like I, I made all my workouts this week. I hit the gym three times uh, this week. Really good workouts in. It's Friday night. I'm going to order a pizza and a beer because I deserve it. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Don't have a pizza and a beer every single night because you went to the gym. <laughs> but it's okay to reward yourself. You built up those gym credits. Have yourself a, a good time. Enjoy yourself. And then get ready to get at it again uh, the, the next gym day. Okay, and you said something that's really important. I want to add to this, and we're going to go back to the gym stuff because the other thing people love to do is, okay, you know, three, two, one, that's it. I'm not going to eat any more junk food. And the next thing you know, they got a piece of lettuce and they've got water, and that's all they think that they can drink and eat. And doesn't that also, again, what you were saying earlier, work against what you want to do? It's not sustainable, right? I mean, we all know ourselves. I mean, there's a reason why we find ourselves in a situation where I think I need to go back to the gym and get fit again or lose some weight or whatever, because we've allowed ourselves to get to a certain point where we're not feeling good about ourselves anymore. And so now we think we're going to, again, flip that all over. So now we're going to give up all that bad stuff that we've been eating and we're going to eat, uh, you know, lettuce and, and drink water. And you're going to do that for four or five days and you're going to think you feel good because it's like, hey, look, I feel all nice and light and stuff like that. Uh, but you're you're literally starving to death. Right. Exactly. And all you start to think about is French fries and chocolate chip cookies. Right. And that's and, 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 way on your mind. And can I jump in and, and correct me if I'm wrong? Doesn't your body do the opposite of what you want? Because and again, if I'm right or wrong, 
if your body feels like it's starving, it holds the fat as long as it can. So it works against you. Well, your body does go into what's called starvation mode. So it does start to try and protect its reserves, right? Okay. And so it slows down your metabolism to protect all the, the fat reserves that you have to keep yourself from starving to death, right? So that is that is the challenge when you sort of reduce your caloric intake significantly, then your body starts to get concerned and your body starts to react against that to protect it, to protect itself. So uh, yeah, so that is actually, uh, it, that's not the, uh, what we always try and promote is just eat as healthy as you can, uh, be aware of what you're eating, eat uh, as few processed foods as you possibly can. Um, but like I say, you know, I mean, if, if that bag of chips is talking to you on a Friday night while you're watching a movie, have at it. That's, that's totally fine. We, when we deny ourselves, that's when we set ourselves up for failure, right? Yeah. And again, it goes back to the word moderation, right? Because you can even overtrain. You can overeat. You can overtrain. And so you can, so everything has to be done in moderation. Your workouts have to be within your capabilities, right? I mean, I'm, uh, I am not capable of putting myself through an elite athlete workout and I would be stupid to do so because now I'm going to hurt myself or I'm going to tax my body too much. And now I'm putting too much on my body. Let's go into that because that's where another problem comes in. Cause I knew I had to really knock my ego down because I've had shoulder problems, which we've, we've talked about and I've been used to, you know, I've done, you know, used to doing two plates. I've actually been able to do three plates of 45 benching. I can't do that. Now I actually keep it on a very low weight. In fact, I haven't even gone over a 45 plate and a 25 plate. I haven't gone over that, but I've been working that out to strengthen my shoulders. But my ego part of me wants, looks around, sees a guy smaller than me, pushing more weight and going, I know I can do more and I want to do that, but I have to stop myself because I'm going to injure myself. What do you say about that when people start off in the gym and they're seeing somebody they consider smaller doing a lot of weight and they're going, oh, I can do that. And then, which usually ends up happening, they injure themselves. Like you said, they have to take days off and then suddenly those days off become weeks off and the motivation starts to die off. And the motivation starts to die off because then they uh, uh, then they don't recover from the injury properly either. And that's exactly right. I mean, that's what happens is most of the time we end up injuring ourselves because our ego is uh, uh, the the most negative thing you can bring into a gym is is a big ego, right? Um, and we don't and your body doesn't care how much <laughs> it's lifting. I like that, right? Like that. Your mind cares how much you're lifting because you want to be the big man in the gym. But your body doesn't care what your body does care about what your body responds to is what's called the quality of the rep right did you do the move properly every single time and when you start loading up on heavy weights and you can't really lift that weight i mean what's the first thing you do you what's called compensate so you start bringing in other muscles that aren't supposed to be incorporated in this exercise to try and help you get this weight off your chest and that's where you hurt yourself right i mean a chest workout is for your chest your shoulders hurt because you're lifting too much. So now you're incorporating your shoulders too much into a chest workout. And now you're asking too much of your shoulders and they can't handle that type of load. Right. So then you end up, you know, tearing you your up like me. Cup or, right. You end up looking like, yeah, you end up like Rudy. Right. So, um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all about throw the ego out and be proud of the quality of rep that you're doing. Make sure if you got, if you're supposed to do three sets of 12, Make sure all 12 of those reps are the best 12 reps that you could possibly do. You should have a little bit of gas left to do two or three more reps at the end of every single set. We don't want to completely exhaust ourselves. Uh, you know, the whole uh, theory of, of um, exhausting the muscle on a workout. If you want to get bigger and you want to get nice and strong and stuff, then yeah, that's what we do. We sort of tear down the muscle in a, and then as it recovers, but when we're just trying to get fit and be healthy and allow our bodies to move, I don't want to wake up the next morning not being able to move because I was trying to squat 275 pounds, right? I want to wake up the next day and feel good. I want to be able to take my dogs for a walk and know that I have no concerns whatsoever, that my hips are fine, my legs are fine, and everything is going to move as I need it to. So that's what we concentrate on, and that's what everybody should be concentrating on is just the proper load, reduce the weight, 
increase the reps a little bit and let's see if we can uh, uh, get you nice and healthy. There is a spot and there is a time and under proper supervision, we do ask our clients to lift as much as they possibly can, but it's only certain moves. And it's again, with supervision, making sure that the move is being done properly and not without incorporating every other single muscle that you can bring into this to get this thing off the ground type thing. I want to get your thoughts on this. I was speaking to a young lady who I did, actually did an interview with. Her name's Stephanie. And uh, she went through a great transformation, whereas 10 years ago, she was almost 300 pounds. And she dropped a lot of weight. And she's actually doing strength training and powerlifting. Her daughter is, is doing it, too. And her daughter actually has broken records for as a teenager across Canada. And one of the things that she mentioned, I asked her about, you know, working out and stuff. She says the problem that people make mistakes with is immediate gratification. Feeling like as soon as they go to the gym, and I want to get your comments on this, going to the gym and expecting that the second they start moving the weight, they're suddenly either going to be looking big or they do uh, sit up suddenly, like, you know, they're expecting immediately they're going to get the six pack and all these other things. And as she said, it took me 10 years to get to where I am now going slow. Can you talk about that? Because I think that's a, uh, something really important because people expect that, you know, two weeks, three weeks, they want to see their abs and they want to see that, you know, they're bigger or lost a lot of weight. And, and that's, uh, that's absolutely right. And that's a very good point. And then what happens after three or four weeks, you know, again, with the whole new year thing, you know, they hit the gym, they're going three or four times a, a week and they're hitting it as hard as they possibly can. And they're four weeks in. It's like, I don't see, uh, I don't see a difference. I, 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 you know, my pants still fit the same and all, and all, and then they get discouraged. Well, this isn't working. And that's why my, my previous comment about this is, uh, this is a lifestyle. This is not a six week snapshot of your life where you're going to get in shape and then you're going to be in shape for the rest of your life. This is a lifelong process of adding fitness to your daily routine. And then you will gradually see those changes. And usually the changes start with how you feel, not with how you look. And that's a, so many people put, how do I look as the number one barometer as to whether or not exercise is working for you? Right. And the number one barometer is how do you feel? I bet you if you really took stock of of your your how your body is moving, that when you do take that dog for a walk in, in the morning, you're like, you know what? I actually could walk a little further and I didn't even notice. I didn't even get winded or that little hill that was always a challenge for me at the top of that hill. I'd be really winded. I didn't even notice. I'm not even winded at the top of that hill. That's where the change starts to happen. And that's what we need to focus on. But that's where the problem comes in, though. Like, I'll give you a great example. As I mentioned before, I lost 20 pounds. Honestly, I didn't even know I lost the weight until I went to my doctor. He told me that. And I was like, what? And I, it wasn't like I was checking my clothes or checking my weight or anything. I had no clue. It's when I, after I came from my doctor, I went home and started trying things on. I'm going, oh, geez, I can put this on now. No clue. until And then suddenly I had other people telling me that. Um, but the problem I found though, was you're looking at, and I bring that word up social media and you're watching and you're seeing people who are look fit and tight, even though we do know now that sometimes as fit as they look, it's because of the angle that they're taking their pictures. And Absolutely. Stuff. Yes. But also you see some guys who like one particular person, I'm not calling him out, but I'm going to say what happens. I mean, the dude's benching like he's showing videos of him benching five and six hundred pounds. OK, and he's doing it two or three times. And maybe his bunch is doing that. You immediately start thinking, well, if he can do it, why can't I do it? That's where I think a problem does come in because you start to, you know, think to yourself, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to be. You get into the gym. Doesn't always be, be yeah. the case because your no. body may not handle it. Right, right. And, and genetics plays such a huge role when it comes to that stuff. Right. I mean, anybody can get physically fit um, and, and you can feel better and you can even look better uh, through exercise and, and physical fitness. Uh, but it doesn't mean you're ever going to be able to bench press 600 pounds. Genetics plays a huge, huge role in that. So and again, it's just like everything else. We cannot compare ourselves 
and we are i mean you know as a uh, as a human race that's uh, what we do on a constant basis and social media is the worst thing for that we compare ourselves to to each other and it's like well if they can do that why can't i and and we need to be more cognizant of what we can do not what someone else is doing and be proud of the little goals if you can only bench press 175 pounds right now and six weeks later you can bench press 185 pounds good for you i mean that is fantastic you've put in the effort and you made a difference and i i want to stress it when uh, when you talk about losing the weight uh, it's very important to stress now exercise alone is not going to help you lose 20 pounds yeah right nutrition is the big when it comes to weight loss Nutrition is the number one factor. Exercise is going to support that and help with that. Um, but the, uh, the nutrition is the most important part when it comes to weight loss. And then we use the strength and conditioning to uh, uh, make our bodies healthier and to give us quality of life as we get older. Now, I'm not near as old as you are, but someone your age, right? Um, you need to be really cognizant of the fact as you, you know, start looking around for senior citizen housing and stuff, you need to know, like, are there stairs? And can I do the stairs? And so if you keep on hitting the gym, then you're going to be able to do those stairs in the senior citizen housing, right? That is absolutely true. And you're right about that, too. In fact, I will even put this out here that we've had conversations off camera where you were saying to me, Rudy, you need to ease off trying to put on all that weight on. And I actually, again, I took your advice and decided... I'm not going to work for what it looks like having all this weight on. I'm going to work on uh, my how I'm doing it, making sure I'm doing it correctly, and how it's making me feel. And you are right about food and stuff because, man, before the you know when the pandemic was going on, I was popping, yep. you know, like Skittles, like it was like nothing. <laughs> had to stop doing that. I had to stop doing a lot of things, but every once in a while, I mean. I've got my I got my bag of chips waiting for me and that kind of thing. So I know I've been balancing things out. And again, you were absolutely correct on all the things that you've said. So let's go back again. Here's this person who hasn't worked out in a long time. They've joined a gym. What suggestions do you have for them? Again, you kind of explained it before and slowly how to going into it. But, you know, what type of exercises do you think that they should be doing when they've just started out? Should they just be doing one or two exercises a day? Should they be doing a series of exercises, like maybe one thing for bench, one thing for leg, so forth and so on? Uh, yeah, I would do, we would concentrate on a, on a full body routine, um, one to two sets, take their body through a full range of motion. So the, the thing you want to concentrate on is your range of motion, making sure uh, we, uh, again, uh, as humans, you know, we walk uh, in, in a very straight line. We, we move in a very specific way. And even if like if you play golf or if you're a baseball player, or a hockey player, uh, if you golf left handed or right handed, I mean, we rotate that way all the time. Right. I mean, if I golf left handed, I'm rotating from my left to right my whole life. I rotate from left to right. So we need to know that type of stuff. So then we need to get you doing some right to left rotational stuff. Because we already know your body can move left to right. You've been doing it your whole life. But your body has not been moving right to left. So now your body is tight on your right-hand side. Your hip flexors are tight. You can't quite, you know, oh, I can uh, almost do the splits on my left side, but I can't even, you know, I can't, I can do a full lunge on my left side. I can't even barely get down on the right side because that side of the body is tight because we've been moving in a different direction that whole time. So we need to concentrate on things like that. We need to open up the hips. We need to make sure that your back is stable. And we need to take, take a look at all these things on how you move. And then we start programming around how you move specifically so we can fix the weaknesses and we can exploit the strengths. Let, let's go into this more. So somebody comes to you who hasn't worked out in a long time and they say, hey, you know, I want a trainer like yourself. I want to come to your facilities. You kind of talked about it already, but I want to go out more specifically. What would be the stages? Do you have a meeting? Do you have a sit down chat? Do you ask, like, how does it all work even before you get to the weights and the workout and things like that? How does that all work in the beginning? 
Uh, it, very simple. Uh, yeah, we, we get together for a meeting. We have a sit down conversation. I have my list of questions and then we're going to, and the idea is to like, so what is it you're trying to achieve with this workout program? This is what we offer. This is our philosophy. Um, and, and we sort of get a, a vibe from each other. It's like, yeah, I think I can work with this person. Uh, and, and same with, yeah, they get a vibe of, yeah, I think uh, this person might be able to help me achieve my goals. We'll run you through a series of small movements, sort of stretches, get you to run your arm, get your back against the wall and sort of run your arm up and down against the wall to see what type of range of motion you have. Does your body pull away from the wall? Can you keep your body against the wall? All kinds of these little things. We run your body through a little series of almost everyday type of movements through a range of motion to see where your limitations are. Can you only lift your shoulder almost above your head, but not all the way? If not, why? Let's figure out why. Did you have an injury? So we go through the questions of when did you, you know, so then you tell me, oh yeah, I messed up my shoulder a few years ago when I was doing some bench presses. Okay, let's talk about that. When did you hurt your shoulder? How did you hurt your shoulder? What have you done to fix your shoulder? What haven't you done to fit? And then we sort of figure out where your body is. And then we start to design a program based around what your body needs specifically. Now it's easy to, uh, I, I could create a program for you that looks quite similar to somebody else. But there's going to be a few different things in there, a few different variables that are going to help you with your shoulder. And they might have tight hip flexors. A lot of people have tight hip flexors. So like this person over here is doing specific stuff for their hips, but you're both going to end up doing some bench presses or you're both going to end up doing some lat pull downs. But there's still these little tiny what's called accessory exercises that we get people to do that are going to help with all the little <coughs> deficiencies uh, that your body has has built up over the years. It's it's this is an interesting process for people to go through, because one of the things that I learned about myself is for years, I did not realize I was doing pushups wrong. I thought I was doing pushups correctly. Um, you probably see a lot of that on people going, oh, yeah, I can do, you know, 100 pushups. And then you see them doing it and they're doing it wrong or sit ups. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Because. Yeah. Nobody actually ever really teaches us how we have to do it until we get injured. And then somebody like yourself then finally says, uh, you know, you're not doing it right. I had my arms out way too far. I didn't realize it was supposed to be closer. Closer, a little bit more of a 45 degree angle instead of flared out like this. Same with your bench pressing and stuff, right? Now you're working your shoulders. You move your arms down 45 to a 45 degree. Now you're working your chest, right? Shoulders, chest. Uh, and then you squeeze right in and now you're working your triceps, right? I mean, it's just these subtle differences that, that you do throw and you're absolutely right. It's, it's the, uh, it, and then that's the benefit of working with a trainer is they make sure the exercise is being done properly. And the first thing that somebody says when we correct the way they're doing an exercise is they say, oh, that makes it a lot harder, right? <laughs> because we try and find ways so to add a little bit more weight. So again, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and throw everything I got into lifting this weight. And if I took it, if I broke it all down for you and said, you can only move this way. Cause that's the proper way. There's no way you're going to move that weight. You think you're trying to move, right? So we got to back off all the weights and we got to teach you how to move first. So again, going back to the question of how does, what does the process work look like when we're first starting out, the first week, easily, the first three or four, five or six workouts are literally teaching you how to move properly, right? And you're, you are going to have some soreness because you haven't worked out in a long time, but I'm not going to get you in there trying to bench press 250 pounds on your first couple of weeks because I'm trying to teach you how to bench press properly. So we're going to strip all that weight off and we're just going through movements, to teach you how to do it. Then we add a little bit of weight. How did that feel, right? Proper movement, decent amount of weight. How'd that feel? Oh, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because it was a lot less weight than I'm normally working with. But that's the process. And once you know how to do the exercise properly, that's when you start seeing results rather quickly. Yeah. Because now you're moving properly. Now you're working through the process properly. And now your body is responding properly. As we wrap this up slowly, how do we know that, I mean, your facilities, great trainers, but somebody who may not go to you, how do they choose a good trainer? 
Uh, do well, that's that's a good question. It really comes down to um, so asking questions, um, really trying to get an understanding of what the starting process is, like you and I just discussed, um, and a good a good vibe on on you know what's their philosophy on on working out. You know, or if now if you want to be jacked, then you're best to find a trainer who knows how to get somebody jacked up, right? But if you're looking for physical fitness and just overall, I wanna feel better and ultimately look better and I wanna be able to walk a set of stairs with no problem at all, then you gotta to talk to somebody who has that same philosophy that's gonna walk you through that process to make sure that A, you're doing everything properly and that B, they're there to support you. And that C, they're not, you know, and don't, the, the whole, uh, uh, you know, the, the stereotypical uh, fitness trainer that is like, ah, come on, dirtbag, yeah. 10 more. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not, uh, that's, you don't need that either, right? You don't need that type of stress and anxiety of this person doesn't think that I'm working hard enough or whatever. It's like, all we ask is whatever you got, give me all of whatever you got today, right? Because there are days and you know this yourself. There are days where you feel good. You go into the gym and you got nothing. Yeah. There are other days when you go into the gym and you feel like you got nothing. And all of a sudden you had one of the best workouts you've ever had, right? Sure. So it's like all we can do is like, we need to work with that. If you come in and say, you know what? I had terrible sleep last night. I didn't get much of a lunch today. I'm like, really, my energy is drained. I don't know what I'm going to get out, out of this today. All right, let's make some adjustments. Let's start you off with a little bit of cardio to get the heart rate going. And then let's see what we get. Right. And then we'll just sort of go from there. It's not like, I don't care what your problem is. You're going to do this workout, mister, and you're going to do it as I tell you to. That's not the type of training you want. You want someone who's there to support you and to guide you and to make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself. Greg, this sounds all great. So how do folks get a hold of you uh, to start off their new year the right way? Uh, Greg at prototypeathlete.com or Greg McDonald fitness at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, either one of those would be uh, would be awesome. Or my phone number, 416-618-1675. Give me a call and we'll uh, we'll set something up. Fantastic. Let's talk again just before the summer. Uh, so, A, I can show you what my results have been to see if I'm still going to the gym. Have I been, you know, losing weight the proper way? Am I looking better or feeling better? And also just letting people know, you know, people who want to, Get that summer bod ready, I guess, yep. or just yep. getting out there and enjoying the weather too. Let's talk then. So, Greg, thank you again so much for your advice. Looking forward to taking that advice for my 2022 workouts. And again, my friend, all the best to you and your family with this new year. Awesome, Rudy. Thanks so much for the conversation. All the best to you uh, for 2022, to you and your family. And uh, do you know what? And I mean, you said uh, looking better. Honestly, you can't look any better. So I mean, I bet you you can feel better, but you look fantastic. So keep up the good work, Rudy. I'm proud of you. Thank you, my friend.